So I would like to introduce His Honor Judge Richard Miller of the BC Provincial Court uh, to perform uh, the oath of office, etc. There's Judge Miller. Yes, good evening. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of Richmond Council. Mr. Hobbs and ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, pleased and honored to uh, be allowed to uh, be part of this ceremony. Um, Mr. Hobbs has been my friend and neighbor for more than 20 years now, so tonight's pretty special for me as well. So, uh, with no further ado, Mr. Hobbs, let's do this thing. We'll start with the oath of office, and uh, you'll repeat after me. I, Han I, Andy Hobbs, do swear that I will perform the duties of the office of counselor faithfully. I will perform the duties of the office of counselor faithfully. And with integrity and will not allow any private interest or to influence my conduct in public matters. And will not allow any private interest to influence my conduct in public matters. I will abide by the statutes bylaws and policies that govern the city. I will abide by the statutes, bylaws and policies that govern the city. And will promote openness, accountability and responsible leadership. And will promote openness, accountability and responsible leadership. And I will dedicate myself at all times to acting in the best interests and I will dedicate myself at all times to acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Richmond. Of the residents of the city of Richmond. Now, Mr. Hobbs, do you swear all that to be true? I do. Okay. Then we'll do the oath of allegiance. I, Andy Hobbs, do promise and swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors. I, Andy Hobbs, do promise and swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors. And Andy Hobbs, do you swear that to be true? I do. Congratulations, sir. You're now a member of council. Thank you, Your Honor. And I think I'm done here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Judge Miller. I want to say uh, thank you for uh, performing the formalities of the swearing-in ceremonies. Uh, it's, it's great to have a Richmond resident and a member of the uh, judiciary here with us this evening uh, to help make this uh, a very, very special occasion. And at the same time, I would like to welcome uh, Councillor Andy Hobbs to City Council. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting time. We have a year and a half basically left in the term. Uh, I think people are familiar with the, uh, the by-election of what we went through. So, so uh, from me as mayor and personally, uh, on behalf of all of Council, welcome. And uh, we'll look forward to having your uh, points of view expressed, and also, as you have questions, we'll be sure to want you to uh, voice any comments or concerns that you may have. So, congratulations. Okay, well, I'm going to just say you're welcome, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, and take my leave. All right, thank you very much, Judge. Uh, Councillor Hobbs, did you want to uh, say a word? Well, just briefly, uh, I just want to thank the, the voters uh, of Richmond, first of all, for providing me with the opportunity to serve the community. It's an honor. I will work very hard. I'll give it 110%, and I am very open to listening to everybody and taking in all points of view before we uh, make a group decision. And I also want to just recognize staff and thank staff for the support they've provided so far. And uh, you're going to have to provide a lot more support to come. So okay. thanks very much. All right, thank you, Councillor. 
Uh, with that, uh, may I have a motion to adopt the minutes of the regular council meeting on May 25th, 2021, and receive for information the Metro Vancouver Board and Brief dated May 28th, 2021. Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments, errors, or omissions? Uh, Councillor McNulty. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Uh, a couple of uh, matters I think uh, bear, bear uh, uh, repeating. Uh, and uh, brought out to the company on our page CNCL 20. Uh, the idea of the draft policy and goal number four with the expanding measure to address housing speculation of vacant homes. Uh, Metro Vancouver is looking at it, but is that not a, a provincial matter? How are we um, on it? And uh, you know, I, I start looking at each of the focuses uh, this change is focused on, and that are we gonna, or is Metro Vancouver gonna make um, a presentation to the uh, province? on that from a board level? Um, I'm sure that that would happen. Uh, as a member of the uh, housing committee, you're fully aware that, you know, if we wait for the province to provide everything, we're not gonna get anywhere, or we won't get very far at least. And so if we can have the regional district and the housing corporation within that uh, acting, I think we'll be much, much farther ahead. And that's part of your committee's mandate. Yeah, especially the first item on supply of the uh, transit uh, right. affordable housing and rental housing, I think is very, very important because uh, Metro Vancouver only has about 3,700 uh, rental units that it's able to do and is relying on the municipalities. The other question I had uh, uh, with regard to um, some of the uh, uh, corollaries uh, in uh, the Vancouver, or Metro Vancouver industrial lands, considering the amount of industrial lands that we have in the region is looking at updating bylaws, etc. Is Metro Vancouver uh, thinking of um, having most of the municipalities come up with some commonality? For example, tonight we hear Vancouver may put uh, um, a tax on gas guzzling uh, uh, cars, etc. Uh, sh should there not be some um, commonality from the, the board? Um, You're talking about the, the industrial lands? Well, I'm talking the industrial lines, the zoning permits, the density, the build-outs, the parking requirements, et cetera. Um, you well, know, that's, uh, yeah, that's an area that, that Richmond is far ahead of the norm in terms of trying to get more uh, reasonable and dense use of the industrial lands. Uh, so, yes, it's, it's a matter of trying to find common denominators uh, that can be uh, used throughout throughout the region. Now, I see Councillor Steves has his hand up. Yeah. Uh, I imagine he probably wants to speak on I that. I hope he can uh, yeah, add so, to that. Uh, Councillor Steves. Uh, that, that's correct. I've been dealing with, uh, as a member of the planning committee, I've been dealing with this issue considerably. Our staff, myself, we've all been involved in actually in advising Metro Vancouver on this issue because we are far ahead. Uh, we're looking at, at, at stacked industrial and, um, okay. you know, one or two stories high and things like this. But Metro Vancouver can only advise that we are leaders in it, and we're looking at ways of uh, increasing the existing industrial lands as well as protecting them and uh, actually uh, and encouraging redevelopment of industrial lands. But unfortunately, Metro Vancouver's decision to make that decision, it's all, all up to the local governments but we are leaders. Well, I, I agree, and I thank you for that and your leadership there. I, I think it's important that uh, uh, others try to follow suit. And my last comment, Your Worship, in the board and brief um, was the uh, cancellation of the Provincial Climate Action Review Incentive Program. What are they going to replace it with? I, it seems the board is going to uh, write a letter to the Provincial Minister of Municipal Affairs, Environment and Climate Change Strategy, uh, and respons uh, Minister Responsible for Housing. But did they offer a suggestion of what they're going to replace it with? Um, because obviously uh, uh, many of the communities uh, in the lower mainland are looking at uh, climate change. That is a matter that, that we're going to have a report coming to council in the very near future okay. about it. Suffice to say that they have not announced what they're replacing it with, uh, but they have assured everybody that they are replacing it. and And so... Uh, at, the, at the Metro Vancouver level, we said, okay, we want the money to start rolling because there's money this year. Right. We want the money to start next year. We don't want it to be full of conditions other than what we would expect uh, in terms of climate action. Um, 
and there was a third one as, as well. Um, so anyway, the answer is it's coming. And the letter is on behalf of all the municipalities, correct? Oh, yeah. As oh, opposed yeah. to individual. Okay, thank you very much. That's great. Good okay. work. Okay, uh, Councillor Ao. Yes, I have a question uh, on CNCL page 28. Uh, the first item, uh, E211, uh, Regional Harmonization of yep. Single Use Items Reduction Bylaws. So I just want to know um, is this high on the priority list of the Vancouver Board? I mean, Metro Vancouver Board. So are they really taking a well, yeah, the, leadership? Is it high on the list? Yeah, it is. The I, for those who don't have the matter in front of them, it's this regional harmonization of single use reduction bylaws. So Richmond has started the ball rolling with its bylaw. We got munis or, uh, environmental approval, Vancouver, Victoria. You know, the cities are starting to want to have their own single use plastics uh, regulations. And so what they're saying is, is Metro Vancouver doesn't have the power to, to enforce or to set bylaws for cities. What they want to do is come up with a template that cities can easily adopt and to have some commonality in it. From Richmond's point of view, I know that uh, we're expecting in the next month or so that we're going to be hearing more about our single-use plastics uh, ban. Uh, You'll recall that we brought in the bylaw, but it, it was subject to uh, Ministry of the Environmental Approval, and also we have to implement, uh, go ahead and implement it by bylaw. And so we're going to be hearing more about that in the next month. Yes, it is considered to be uh, important, but they can only do so much. It's like the sprinkling ban. They, they bring it in, they want everybody to adopt it. In that case, everybody does. Uh, but they can't enforce it if, if they don't. Right. Very good. Thank you. All right. So uh, with that, uh, we'll call the question on the motion. All those in favor? Any opposed? That is carried. Brings us to uh, the agenda additions and deletions. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. We have one agenda addition. It's on page CNCL5. It's for item 21. This is a report titled YVR Proposed Land Use Plan Amendment. And there is a proposed amendment to recommendation 2A, which would read as follows. Define the process and scope of the planning process, including diligent consultation with the residents of Burkeville and Richmond in general, that will precede any development in the areas proposed to be amended. All right, may I have a motion on the agenda with that change? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Any opposed? That is carried. Uh, brings us to the changes that we need to make because we do have a new councillor. You'll recall that when Councillor Green went uh, to the province, we had to juggle around her assignments and reassign the liaison positions and, and the committees. And so now it's a matter with the new councillor of kind of reversing that pro, uh, process to a certain point. So the first item is the appointment of council members to external organizations. I'm not making any recommendations there. Uh, standing committees. Uh, the Community Safety Committee will now be consist of Councillor McNulty, Day, Hobbs, Lou, and Steves. And Public Works and Transportation Committee will now consist of Councillor Au as the chair, Councillor Liu, Councillor Hobbs, uh, McPhail, and Wolf. Um, and just to be clear, community safety will still be chaired by Councillor McNulty and vice chaired by Councillor Day. And Councillor Au will still uh, chair the Public Works and Transportation Committee. Then we have a whole raft of different liaisons. Uh, so the first group is a liaison to city advisory committees and organizations. Uh, the recommendation is that uh, council school board liaison uh, committee, Councillor Hobbs would replace Councillor Au. Richmond Center for Disability, Councillor Hobbs would replace Councillor Liu. 
Richmond Sister City Advisory Committee, Councillor Hobbs would replace Councillor McPhail. May I have a motion accordingly? Moved, Moved and seconded. Councillor Wolf. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. I was uh, just um, thought I, I had a, another a point in addition to what I mentioned earlier today at our earlier meeting. Um, I, I know that uh, I was removed from the Community Safety Standing Committee. Uh, that wasn't mentioned, but, um, and, and Andy Hobbs would be on that, that committee. Um, but my, my experience um, since being elected in fall of 2018 and attending all the community safety meeting, meetings, uh, I was very pleased uh, that I got selected to be put on it in the absence of a counselor. Um, but again, I've, I've learned so, so much that only comes with attending those meetings Many items from community safety don't come to council because they're received for information. They're uh, bylaw uh, updates or infraction updates. They're RCMP uh, fire um, updates. And some of them go into closed and there's no other way to get this information if you're not on the committee. So my, my request is to amend the, the change that was made um, to keep me in addition to adding Councillor Hobbs uh, as, a, as a show of support for community safety. If we just uh, approve such a high stakes bus budget, then why don't we also put more, more counselors on the community safety committee? So if that amendment is, would be um, uh, accepted, then great. If not, then uh, I'd have to be opposed to these changes. Um, <clears throat> on the standing committees, that's the sole prerogative of the mayor. So the answer is, uh, I have made the announcement as to the way it would be. Uh, every member of council is welcome to come to any committee they wish to come to. Uh, and, and in fact, I know that you sometimes come to other committees uh, where you're not a member. So if, whether or not you're a member, you can come to the committee, you can ask questions, you can make your comments, uh, you can't vote and you can't make motions, but anything of importance comes to council. So uh, I'm gonna to decline to make that uh, change. Councillor Day. I just wanted to um, you know, thank Mayor for his appointment. I wanted to offer once again that I've been a councillor for seven years. I very much like to be the chair of one of my committees. And so once again, it's given that we have a brand new you know, council being reconfigured, I think now it's an excellent time to offer chairmanship to all the councillors who have not had an opportunity yet to be the chair of a particular committee. Thank you for your comments. The appointments have been made. I'm going to call the question on the Council School Board, Center for Disability and Richmond Sister City Committee uh, on the motion on the floor. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried with Councillor Wolf. And Councillor Day, opposed. Uh, then we have the uh, changes in the appointment of members of council as a liaison to community associations. Uh, and there's one change there for the city center community association. My recommendation is that Councillor Hobbs would replace Councillor Steves, and I would so move. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Any opposed? It's carried. Then we have, uh, we have appointment of members of council's liaison to various boards and there's nothing there. Uh, appointment of members of council as a liaison to various societies. <clears throat> My recommendation is the London Heritage Farm Society. Uh, Councillor Hobbs would replace Councillor Day. And on Minaru Seniors Society, Councillor Hobbs would replace Councillor McNulty and I would so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments, questions? All those in favor? Any opposed? It's carried with Councillor Day opposed. And then we have the changes in the appointment of acting mayors. <clears throat> and there's only one change. August 1st to September 15th, Councillor Hobbs would replace Councillor Steves as the acting mayor. mayor and I'll so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Those opposed? 
That's carried. <clears throat> so we have a motion to resolve in the Committee of the Whole to, to hear delegations on items on the agenda. Second. All those in favor oppose. Carried. We have two such delegations. Uh, they are both in relation to the YVR planning matter, number 21. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I will go to Lori Cockrell. If you could turn on, turn on your screen, ma'am. Okay. Hi. Now, just before you start, we ask mm -hmm. that. Please turn on your screen. Oh, I thought I did. <laughs> you did, but then it went off. Um, <laughs> so, we ask that you start by introducing yourself. Uh, we know the item that you want to speak to is item 21, uh, and mm -hmm. you have a time limit of five minutes as a delegation. I just want to emphasize to you the chain for you and the next, uh, the next delegation. <clears throat> the motion as it's going to read uh, talks about uh, YVR committing to full uh, discussion and consultation uh, with Burkeville and with Richmond in general. So uh, if that is your concern, that, that's how we plan to address that. So it's over oh, to you. Okay. Um, well, actually, yes, that was my, my concern, uh, was that there was uh, no consultation on the proposed uh, diagrams and uh, maps that I saw, but it sounds as though that has been addressed. Um, that is the plan. Yes, ma'am. That is the okay. Plan. Um, good. Okay. Well, uh, my, my only suggestion or point to note would be that I think YVR needs a representative from the community to have continuous consultation rather than piecemeal consultation that we've seen in the past. Um, so if, if they can appoint someone to their board or if they can have a, a committee of some sort um, it would be nice if uh, it wasn't uh, post hoc rather than, but it was, you know, future focused. And we had somebody who was actually uh, speaking for not just our community, but also the communities that are along the flight path in Richmond. So thank you very much for taking Burkeville um, into consideration and organizing that with YBR so <coughs> consultation can occur. Um, the city of Richmond does have a representative on the YVR board. And so if you don't know him, his name is Dan Namura. Uh, may, I, may I suggest that you, I think you know how to get a hold of our clerk. Get a hold yep. of her and she'll arrange to get you the contact information for Mr. Namura. It sounds like it'd be worthwhile you having a conversation with him uh, about this matter. And I think that there's ongoing matters with Burkeville as well. Uh, yes, yeah. thank you, that's good advice. Okay, now, Councillor Wolf, do you have a question of this person? Yes, I do. Thank you, uh, Your Worship, to the delegate. Uh, hi, thanks for coming out. Um, could you just briefly touch on what is the, the experience or the issues issues that you have that you've had in the past that have brought you forward? Um, although you you didn't speak as much because you heard mm -hmm. the the amendment that was made, could you yes. just speak to? Are you mainly referring to? Uh, the Templeton redevelopment work and that corridor <laughs> space behind Burkeville, or, or is there something else? No, uh, well, I'm, the, the Templeton corridor is also a concern, and I was involved in that consultation process. And we made it very clear to YVR throughout that process that the consultation was welcomed, uh, but it was engaged way too late. So a lot of the major decisions had already been made without community consultation, and we would have really appreciated being involved. So what I can see happening is development happening all around Burkeville and no consultation with the community. So we, we want to be involved and we want to be involved much earlier than we have been in the past. All right, Councillor McNulty. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, um, and, and as a question to the delegation, uh, Ms. Cockrell, thank you for coming forward and just following up on what Councillor Wilf was saying. Uh, one of the things that's... Uh, uh, I have you down in my notes here about the effect on Burkeville and what it is and mm -hmm. what communication has been done. 
Is there, um, given uh, Burkeville and the, uh, the society, the, uh, the um, community association or whatever, there should be a commonality in terms of who, can, who, uh, who one can go to in the community to speak to. As um, mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Brody said, Dan Nemur is our representative to the board, so if anything is to go to the board, we would go through him to take the board of directors of YVR. We, we mm -hmm. know, and I'm going to make it, make it my, who, who or what mechanism would the citizens of Burkeville have um, to have a spokesperson? Uh, for example, the last time we spoke to members of the community society, we had individual members, um, you know, et cetera. And I think with a common front, we're much stronger and can get that across. So I leave that uh, uh, for, for you to ponder with the other members of the community. And it would be nice to mm -hmm. know on issues for YVR in Burkeville, we go to, let's say it's Lori, you know, or whoever it is. Right. Or it's a yep. committee or whatever. But at least there is one. And we, we can uh, support you because YVR does not communicate very well, in my opinion. Yes. We've experienced that. So the Sea Island Community Association has a lot of new uh, members who are very interested and active. Good. And I can provide um, the city clerk with an email address if you would like to get in contact at any time with the Sea Island Community Association. That would be helpful. Thank you very much. Good okay. work. All yes. right. Thank no you. worries. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, the next speaker also on the same item is Tannis uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to mess this up. T uh, Ravochi? Very good try. Very close. <laughs> Thank you. It's an ongoing problem, not to worry. It's actually uh, Hungarian, so it'll be Tomas, uh, Thomas in Hungarian, so Ravochi Tomas, if you really want to be accurate. But don't worry, it, uh, your approximation was very good. I appreciate it very much. All right, go ahead, sir. Uh, you heard the, my remarks to the previous speaker. Um, uh, we, we've, we've indicated that Burkeville and Richmond need to be better communicated with on this particular issue. Absolutely. No, and I completely uh, agree. I can't agree more, in fact. And uh, um, to be honest with you, um, it was... Okay, okay. Well, I have a little bit of a, a, a presentation prepared. Just not a presentation, just a, a few words I'd like to say. But it was wonderful to hear your comments that you are interested in, in working together with us because that's, I think, the missing from, uh, from a lot of things. But anyway, uh, long story short, I have uh, recently become the vice president of the Sea Island Community Association. And we're trying to take exactly what you're saying, a more proactive approach to all matters. I mean, really, in a nutshell, we're trying to rebuild existing relationships and develop new ones with uh, clearly neighbors who we don't have good relations, good relations with, for instance, YVR. So that's definitely our, our main focus right now. Um, specifically regarding this, uh, the YVR land use amendment proposal, just to give it as an example and sort of a bit of a background and insight into our point of view and what tends to seems to happen often is that we basically, we first learned about this YVR proposal from a Daily Hive article that was published about a week ago and it was posted on a community uh, Facebook page that we have for our community members and then we kind of had an inkling of, oh, something's happening. Thankfully, Councillor Steves very kindly and in a very timely fashion helped to calm our considerable surprise and consternation and frustration and brought this matter to us right away as soon as um, he'd heard about it himself from the City Planning Committee meeting just the day before. And basically, in a timely fashion, we had a board meeting uh, scheduled for Wednesday. So we discussed it then. And then we were basically... Um, we were starting to think about what kind of an action we could take and what we could really do. I mean, ideally, we really do desire and we need, since, especially since we're the most directly impacted community in all of Richmond by YVR, we need to have an equal opportunity to, to review that proposed YVR amendment ourselves and prepare our own response. However, we do understand the city has, uh, has a deadline to meet to get their, their feedback back to YVR by the 18th. So we understand that delaying things would not be a possibility at this point. How, so as a result, we've consulted with uh, Councillor Steves and I've entrusted him to work on an appropriate amendment, which I've already heard and it's wonderful. It's great to hear that we're being included in that. Um, I'm not sure if we can amend the existing report to include that as well, but uh, at any rate, that's, that's great news. Uh, in short, it just all underscores the fact that going forward, we really strongly desire and request to be an active and vital part of these and other types of 
discussions as well as any collaborative opportunities which directly and critically impact our residents here on Sea Island and um, especially matters concerning the uh, YVR because it's, um, as you, as you uh, and uh, Councillor McNulty, McNulty and uh, Councillor Wolf have mentioned, there is uh, a poor track record of communication at this point. So we're really eager to work with the city to, uh, to really improve our own relationship with the city as well as the relationship with YVR. So that's, uh, that's sort of our, our new initiative, shall we say, because I, I have to admit that what I've heard, what I'm seeing previously, that wasn't really working well. The previous uh, Sea Lion Community Association right. didn't really make a great job, do a good job, good job of maintaining that relationship. So anyway, going forward, we really would like to do that. All right, we have a question from Councillor Day. Thank you very much, um, and thanks for coming forward. Did you get like one of these maps? Yes, we did, but did. but we didn't receive it directly. We got it from Councillor uh, Steves. Okay. And we saw uh, it published in the article, so we didn't actually receive it to our own uh, community association. We kind of found out about out about it sort of backhandedly, so through the back door. Okay. Well, let's change that. Thank you so much, Candice, for coming forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wolf. Hi, thank you, uh, through your worship, to the delegate, uh, Tomas. If you could um, enlighten me how you heard the, the date, because um, I read in the report here that they wanted uh, the City of Richmond's feedback by May 24th, but you quoted uh, June 18th. Yes, um, I think there was some mention in one of the paragraphs that they were looking for input around uh, the middle of June or sometime in June, and uh, in our discussions with uh, Councillor Steves, uh, maybe I, I got my numbers wrong, but uh, Councillor Steves, perhaps you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the number, I, uh, the date I heard. Uh, staff, staff requested an extension, and that was the result of it, to mid-June. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, both of the uh, delegations. May I have a motion to rise and report? No move. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, that brings us to the consent agenda. Uh, the YVR proposed land use am plan amendment has been taken off there. We'll deal with that after the consent agenda. Receipt of committee minutes, the renaming of the Mineral Place Activity Center, the Museum and Heritage Services Year in Review for 2020, the application to amend the liquor primary liquor license uh, for uh, the company doing business as Monkey Nine Brew Pub on I Entertainment Boulevard, and finally the recommended long-term streetscape visions for Bayview, Chatham, and Moncton Streets. May I have a motion to adopt those by general consent? Move. Moved. Moved and seconded. Uh, Councillor Steves. Yes, uh, I've had second thoughts about item 22, so I'd like that removed from the consent agenda. Oh, okay. So that's off the consent as well. No, okay. Okay, uh, hardly anything left. Uh, Councillor McNulty. No, I'm on 22, so I'll speak when it comes. Thank All you. All right. Uh, 22. All right. Councillor Au. Your Worship, I want to ask two questions about the Museum and Heritage Service Year in Review 2020. Uh, actually, my question is not on the uh, past year, but um, my question is about the future plan uh, on CNCL 52. Uh, staff mentioned that uh, there will be, uh, I mean, the, uh, the lower end of the page, uh, the Richmond History Videos Series. So I just wanted to note uh, what are the 10 topics being picked uh, for the uh, video production. And I just want to make sure that uh, the history or the stories of the Indigenous people are being included. Uh, through His Worship to Councillor Al, um, we have identified the 10 topics, uh, and many of them are well underway now. Uh, there are a variety of different areas covered, um, and they do mention Indigenous people in various ways uh, through each of the videos. Uh, the topics include growth of a city, which is about uh, the demographics and neighborhood growth, um, islands by nature, uh, the story of Steveston, the Steveston tram, Japanese Canadian boat building, uh, playing sports 
Building Community is one title. Farm to Table, which is the agribusiness generally. Flight, Heritage, and Diversity in the City. Uh, so, so each of these mentions Indigenous people as is relevant to the story. Uh, that said, we are continuing to build relationships with our local Indigenous peoples and uh, would welcome the opportunity and would like to plan in the future for an Indigenous specific uh, material, whether that's video or some other sort of content that we may work with our Indigenous partners to help them share their stories. To follow up, to, I just want to make sure that uh, we would have sufficient highlight of the history of the indigenous people uh, in Richmond. I'm not, well, I'm not going to, as far as to request that we should have one particular uh, topic on it. However, you know, s such as uh, under the topic of heritage, you know, I think we should emphasize and highlight the history of the indigenous people. Because to many newcomers, they think there's no history before the uh, coming of the um, uh, Europeans. So I, I just want to make sure that that is being being done. And also, I want to ask: Will there be uh, subtitles um, on the videos? Uh, because I, I again, uh, this is for the benefit of the newcomers. And the more they understand the history of Richmond, I think the better they would feel that they are part of the the city and become more integrated. So I would suggest that, if possible, perhaps you know we can have subtitles uh, in different languages on these videos. Uh, through his worship to Councillor Al, uh, to my understanding, we do not have plans for subtitles at the moment, but we will certainly explore that. Okay, great. And my second question is uh, on CNCL uh, 53, uh, the second, I mean, the third last paragraph. Uh, staff mentioned that uh, the, the Richmond Museum has signed a memorandum of understanding with UBC uh, on an initi initiative for student teaching and research in Chinese Canadian studies. So I just want to ask or sub for clarification. So is this initiative for future teachers or is it a general program that uh, all students can take? Uh, through his worship to Councillor Al, the, the MOU is to develop, uh, work with students to develop content um, relating to Chinese Canadian history in Richmond. That content may be used for educational programs and resources for teachers. It may also be used in exhibits or other uh, types of materials, videos, and things like that. So it will support a whole range of activities, uh, including teacher education. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, um, let's see now. Councillor Hobbs. Thank you, and through your worship. I just wanted to comment on the report in general that um, not everybody in the public has a chance to read it. So uh, it was pretty impressive actually, considering we went through COVID, if you look at the visitation numbers for various sites, the number of volunteer hours that were contributed despite being in COVID, uh, it was actually quite a successful year, all things considered. And I just wanna point out that that is actually largely due to the uh, cooperative working relationship between staff on site and uh, volunteers working in those areas. So. Um, despite COVID, I thought it was actually quite a uh, successful year. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Councillor Day. Thank you very much, Mayor Brody. Um, I just want to speak to a couple of items on the uh, consent agenda. Um, number 18 is very simple. We're just changing the name of Mineral Place Activity Centre to 7660 Mineral Gate. It can be confusing when people are trying to find, um, you know, a activity center and they're in the wrong place. So that makes common sense. Um, in the services that we're looking at potentially um, a collaboration of the teams of Spanish shipyards and London Farm that could better support each one of those organizations. Uh, number 20 is the uh, Monkey Nine Brew Pub, which is uh, basically the old... Um, uh, bowling uh, alley and at um, uh, Entertainment Boulevard, and um, so they, they're expanding their operation. And I support that because it's far away from a lot of other people, so it's not going to bother residents. And it's also a good business that, that has not had any troubles with the RCMP. So you want to encourage um, in areas where they've proven that they are, you know, doing all the right things. And 21 and 22 are off the consent agenda, so that's it for me. Thank you.
So we'll call the uh, question on the consent agenda. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Uh, that brings us to number 21, the YVR matter. Uh, so we'll go to the chair of the planning committee, uh, Councilor McPhail. Uh, thank you, your worship. Item 21, YVR proposed land use plan amendment 2021. Planning Committee recommendation number one, that Council receive the report titled YVR Proposed Land Use Plan Amendment 2021, dated May 20th, 2021, from the Director, Policy Planning for Information, and two, that Council support the proposed amendment to the YVR 2037 Master Plan in principle, subject to a request that YVR A um, define the process and scope of the planning process include diligent consultation with residents of Brookville and Richmond in general before that will precede any development in the areas proposed to be amendment and B refine the groundside commercial land use designation south of the south runway to clarify YVR stated intent to limit retail to the local serving and I would so move moved and seconded just a few comments, Your Worship. Uh, YVR staff informed the City of Richmond of proposed amendments to the YVR 2037 Master Plan and requested comments from the City before they submitted the proposal to uh, Transport Canada. I do have a question uh, through you, Your Worship, and um, it kind of goes along the lines of what we heard from the delegations tonight. Do, does staff know anything about uh, YVR's consultation plan. I mean, they have a duty to consult with the local government because they are a federal entity and that's uh, part of their planning process. But I was shocked to hear that local residents didn't know anything about the plan. So does our staff know anything about their public consultation plan? Yeah, through your worship to Councillor McPhail, uh, for land use plan amendments, YVR essentially just has to contact uh, affected municipalities. Uh, they don't have... Uh, there's nothing prescribed where they would have to identify or consult with uh, individual neighborhoods. All right, so then I really am in support of 2A and the amendments that we made to it, and I hope that uh, when we uh, do write to why we are, that we strongly advise them to consult and liaise with the community, uh, Burkeville and Richmond as a whole. And um, it just came to my mind tonight that um, they will be submitting the application to Transport Canada for approval of the amendments. And I was wondering if uh, we should uh, CC our correspondence to our MPs for their information. I think it's important to know uh, what is going on uh, in their community as well as this is uh, within their purview. I, I hope there's a consensus to do that. I'll take that as friendly unless someone objects. That's all for me. Thank you, Your Worship. All right. Uh, Councilor McNulty. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Uh, a, a number of uh, matters with regard to this report, and I thank staff for uh, doing a good job. I think uh, I think it's imperative that uh, uh, we uh, we have the uh, citizens of Burkeville, uh, uh their um, concerns uh, uh, in in the, in the forefront because uh, they live there and the quality of life there, and it's been a long established community. And um, obviously, um, it's a great community, and we've got to support them. But my, more importantly, Your Worship, are my questions uh, that I think before we rubber stamp this, that we get some answers. Um, you know, there are some innuendos in here. You know, the greatest thing the city of Richmond did in the a previous council, Your wor Worship, and, and, and that's a, the shopping center over on Templeton Road. Uh, remember where that shopping center was going to go when it was this council or council of Richmond that suggested that wasn't the place for it and uh, where it should go. And I have some concerns about uh, uh, what they're doing here, and I think we have to have more definition on on um, what is there. Um, it, 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 they, uh, I get, they talk about air side, uh, they talk about, and I think that should be defined. Uh, what does that mean? How does that impact uh, the south area? Um, because uh, how, uh, how does that affect uh, the whole island? How does that affect Richmond? They talk about transportation and um, improvements along uh, Ross Baker Way uh, for, and Ferguson Road, for example. Well, Ross Baker Way, as you know, Your Worship, in rush hour, it's backed all the way to the two-road bridge at times. Uh, we need to know how that's going to impact Richmond, but also uh, going through Burkeville as, uh, as well. And I think that, uh, uh, to me, it's, uh, uh, it's important that we uh, get those um, definitions. 
the airside commercial and the ground side commercial, I, you can let your imagination go on that. So I think we need some, uh, some definition from, from them, whether we go through our, our, our um, representative or not. The other thing that really sticks out is the possible future of the third runway parallel to the existing south runway. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. It's coming. Okay, we've always said that. And it's, uh, we know it's not going to go over South Vancouver. Um, it's going to come over Richmond. And it's like uh, having the planes in the uh, South Terminal when they used to fly over uh, Harold's house and my house on the West Dyke. I think we need to, to pinpoint what's the effect, what's the effect um, on Burkeville. And um, these are questions I think um, we need to have directly. The other thing, Your Worship, too, do they not have a new CAO? New CEO, yes. Yes. I think it's probably time that this council meets with the new CEO and the board. <coughs> I think we reckon along with the, the Burkeville, a Burkeville resident uh, to come along and, and have those meetings. It's probably about two years, three years since we've been out there uh, to share anything and, uh, and talk about it. And I think it behooves us as stewards of, of, of the city uh, to protect everybody's interests. So, and because it's new, and I understand there are a number of new board members, including our own, and I, and, and I have ultimate faith in the one uh, that we, uh, we've always had the best board members as far as I'm concerned. So I think those are kinds of things that we need to, to sit and discuss with them. Uh, you know, they want to rush through their timetable, and I think our people are going to be here for a long time as well. Some of their board members come and go. And uh, yes, I know we all have deadlines, but this is a master plan and it's part of the 2037 plan, and, but it's also part of our plan. And I think uh, we need to talk about the, um, the flexibility in the north runway, the possibility of the existing south runway, and the consultative process. So, uh, you, you Worship, I'm not sure how we want to handle it. I'm glad we're only endorsing this, I hope, in principle. We're not endorsing it, but in principle. And that allows us to have some further discussions along that that line. So uh, that's where I'm, I'm coming from. I, I will support the direction uh, we've gone, but they have not completed analysis yet um, at the high level, and yet they want us to give the blessing. So, <coughs> My suggestion <coughs> in terms of what you've talked about is we add C, which would be a request that the CEO and staff of YVR meet with our city council. Excellent. I, I support that 100%. Again, I'll take Anyhow, that. Uh, because when you, you see intent to be local serving, well, what does that mean? Does that mean Burkeville's going to get a restaurant like they want, or they're going to get a store, or does it mean they have to go another uh, four miles to go and they can't use it, et cetera? What, you know, where should it go? All right. We went through that with the run-up stuff. We went through it with the building that was X meters away from... Uh, I call it the fence line at Burkeville, which separate the airport. So I think these things uh, need to be uh, uh, um, really, really discussed before we uh, put a rubber stamp on them. Thank you. Councilor Wolf. Uh, yes, thank you. Through your worship, um, to Council, I, I would like to make an amendment and, and, and perhaps get your support uh, for it. Um, I, I'm, I'm in... Uh, support of the things we've just added and, and changed it before this meeting um, to include the consultation for Burkeville and beyond, uh, the re request a meeting, um, all, all, all that's good. But my, what my uh, amendment would, would be to, to strike out uh, part of the sentence for number two so that it just goes directly to um, that council request that YVR provide ABC. So that you'd strike out the support for proposed amendment to the YVR 2037 master plan in principle, subject to, and just go council request that YVR. We're the city, they're the airport. Um, many of the people who work there live in Richmond. I was one of them um, for a fair bit of time. And uh, I, I uh, just being on, on council for, for nearly three years now, and it's been constant. One neighborhood has stood out at, at, at dealing with a brunt of health hazards, uh, noise, uh, vibrating houses, 
And then the pandemic struck and these people were forced to spend more time at home and deal with even more elevation uh, of health effects from the, the high decibel sounds and just the non-stop work and not being addressed um, uh, adequately. So I, I think it, it, it's not fair to our, our residents. Uh, and I think it um, basically gives YVR the blessing if we were to uh, prove what it is, what's in writing right now. And I think uh, just some of the previous documents we've received related to uh, the, the flight path and, and showing which runway they're using and which ones they're not. And, that, and there's room to grow clearly on that. Uh, I can't speak to it, but staff uh, or um, staff provided us a memo, uh, in, in a confidential memo a few months ago. Uh, uh, if, it's, if it's a confidential memo, that's the way it's going to stay. Yep, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's all I'm saying about it. But it's critical because the dates that this evolves uh, fits right into the 2037 uh, land use plan amendment. So they're so con connected, uh, and it's just astonishing what, what I've learned from that. And, and clearly, I can't support uh, this because it just feeds in what uh, the other work um, is. There's, there's, there's nothing but – oh, here, I, ju I just for council's um, info, I, as the council liaison for ACE, Advisory Committee on the Environment, last week, we had a presentation from YBR and all the environmental um, glorious things that they do. Um, and, and it's wonderful saving water and energy, changing light bulbs, but they're just devastating all the green space, all the open space. And Council, well, everything. Please, please stay to the point. The point is this land use plan, okay? So I would like to make that amendment to cross out that statement. Okay. Is that seconded? So it's seconded by Councillor Day. Uh, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand rather than raising it virtually. Actually, raise your hand if you want to speak to this. The idea is that Council would request, it, it would cut out the words, support the proposal amendment to the YVR 2030 Master Plan Principle Subject to a Okay? Is there anyone who wants to speak to it? Because um, I'd like to ask staff uh, who, who can answer this. I take it they're going ahead without us or with us, right? Your Worship, perhaps I can deal with that. Um, YVR does have the right to proceed with the, their plan approval process, which would be to send the plan to the minister, the Federal Minister of Transportation. So uh, it, it is their call whether they pause to deal with any issues that the city flags or whether they continue in their process. All right. Uh, I'm, not going to I'm not going to support this, this amendment. You're, you're just completely watering it down to say you're making this request. That will get us nowhere, in my opinion. Councillor Day. You're on mute. I will learn this eventually. Uh, Mr. Ersick, if we did remove uh, support in principle, what alternative wording could we use that would uh, accomplish what Councillor Wolf is suggesting? Uh, through your worship to Councillor Day, um, I, I think you would either do it the way that it is, adopt it the way that it is with a support in principle. So that, that's a low level of qualified support um, subject to the conditions that you've added, um, or uh, I think the other alternative is to remove the, you know, the reference to the support in principle the way that Councillor Wolf outlined it. So if we remove uh, support in principle, they would then require our support. Is that correct? Uh, through your worship to Councillor Day, no, it is their prerogative to continue without the city's uh, support. They are not obliged to obtain a formal approval from the city. And presumably, if they were to do that, that would be something that the federal minister would take into account uh, in considering the application from YVR. Okay, we're on the amendment. Is anybody else wanting to speak to the amendment? All right, nobody else is. I'll call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? Those opposed? All right, so uh, 
uh, Councillor Wolf was uh, alone in his support for it. Everyone else was opposed. We're back to the main motion. Uh, go, we'll go to Councillor Steves. Yeah, uh, thanks very much. Um, I was shocked to find out that the CI on the uh, Community Association had not heard anything about this through direct channels. <laughs> and so I had a couple of meetings with them after we had their meeting on uh, on uh, the day after we had it at Planning Committee. And uh, we discussed it considerably. They've got a new board now, a vibrant new board, that really wants to work to improve their community. And suddenly they're faced with, with uh, no consultation whatsoever on what's happening all around them. So I'm, I'm pleased that we were able to amend the uh, the entire motion tonight, so that we're telling YVR that they that uh, Burkeville must be consulted, and I'm assuming that with that agreement, council is also agreeing to work with Burkeville uh, to bring forward their ideas. Uh, they 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 would like some neighborhood a local commercial, and so we should work with them to see where we can fit things like that in because they got they they've got no amenities there at all. I remember when I was a youth and and. Uh, and Burkeville was a vibrant uh, a village. Uh, they had they had the best pub in the Lower Main. And we called it the Green Door, but it was it was built during World War II. And on a Saturday night, uh, uh, farmers and vets would come in, uh, pick up bands, and had music and dancing. It was it was a great place to go. And uh, that was lost when the when the uh, bridge was built. And there's been nothing to replace it in terms of of uh, other than the, the small community center that they've got. They're also interested in the heritage of their community and they'd like, like some help and in, in see if they can preserve some of the heritage. So I think we need to really support them and, and help them along their way to um, revive Burkeville, you might say. Second comment I wanna make about one thing I really do support in this airport plan is that they are changing the development north of the North Runway to a more intensified commercial type of development. It isn't good from the point of view of Richmond, perhaps, in competing with the airport, but by putting some major buildings in there, it blocks the air, the north, north runway, uh, uh, blocks the noise from the runway to Southlands. And if council, were, were, well, most of you weren't on council at the time, when we went, had this great debate years ago, Southlands overruled Richmond in terms of which runway they would use. And Southlands has always, has always, uh, been able to convince the airport to fly the planes over 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 the Richmond city, our town center, and use the south runway, and use the north runway as little as possible. So this one change should be a major help to us in convincing the airport they should use the north runway more than they use the south runway, or at least use them equally. Uh, the second aspect of it is that uh, that uh, I think. If we do have a little bit of local retail, as staff has suggested, uh, that will be a, a benefit of, to Burkeville and, and they can share with the employees down in the, uh, in the Southern area in whatever local uh, facilities are going in. Um, the next thing I want to comment, however, is that I am concerned about the construction south of South Runway they're saying there's no great plans to put another runway in, in a hurry. My concern is that they will construct on it and change their mind and the, the next, next event will be attempting to put a new runway out of, over Sturgeon Banks. So uh, I have a bit of a problem with that. Uh, we're going to have to trust them that that's not their plan, but, uh, and, and I'm retiring, so I probably won't be in China probably 10 years down the road, but I just want to forewarn everybody that's exactly what could happen if they decided that once they developed the area south of the south runway, the only option left option left is to, to destroy habitat outside the dikes. So those are my comments. I think that uh, I support the overall proposal of, and especially includes, including Sea Island Association in all of these deliberations and we'll see where it takes us. All right, Councillor Howe. Uh, Your Worship, I support the uh Motion on table as is. However, you know, I would like to make some comments and probably a suggestion. Uh, I've been supportive of the, the Vancouver Airport uh, because I think it's very important to us uh, in terms of the economic contribution uh, and also the employment 
uh, that they offer to our citizens. I think uh, it has been making con great contribution to the benefits of the city. However, why we are is also a very independent uh, entity. Um, they are doing lots of things without having to ask the city for approval or for support. So as already been, been mentioned, they can go ahead with, of, with many of the projects. However, what they are doing or they are going to do will have a huge impact uh, on the city, uh, on the citizens. And many of these issues uh, will have a long-term impact uh, on us. And I remember that um, for a long time, uh, Councillor Steves talked about um, the regional airport concept. Now, we opposed to the, basically we opposed to the third run rate because we know that it's going to have a huge impact on us. And I think for a long-term solution of the problem is really uh, to re-evaluate uh, the concept of regional airport so that, you know, um, the air, the YVL doesn't need to expand too much. Uh, and they can also divert some of the demand to a regional local airport, such as uh, the airport in Abbotsford. So I want to suggest that uh, on top of what we are uh, already on the table, I want to ask, you know, are we serious about that concept? Are we trying to thinking of, are we trying, thinking of, you know, trying to find a long-term solution to the, to the problem? And I think we have an opportunity here. We know about the uh, massive expansion project um, the airport has initiated. However, because of the pandemic, they put a stop on the expansion. So I think perhaps this is a window for, for them and for us to take another look at the future of the airport and its need for <coughs> expansion. So I would like to suggest that uh, we ask staff to go back to um, our documents and records and find out what has been proposed or has been talked about the regional airport concept and come back with a report and suggestions so that we can discuss the concept further. And I, honestly, I want to make this into a, a, a formal proposal. I know that we've, we've talked about that uh, uh, for quite some time. I know that we've spoken to the uh, Federal Ministry of, Edu um, of Transportation about this, but I really want this to be a formal proposal coming from Rickman. So I want staff to, to take out for us what has been done, what's been talked about in the past, and how can we, we initiate uh, why don't we talk. just why don't we just ask staff to get out what we've done before and I can tell you what that is at least in part is when we when we are looking at the long-term plan there was a number of observations we as a council made and one of them was that the YVR should be looking at some kind of a regional model uh, and diverting a lot of the little planes away from YVR and getting them to the deltas and the pit meadows and and Abbotsford etc um, I'm, I'm not sure that that ever got anywhere, uh, but I do, I do stress it would have to be their proposal, not our proposal. So uh, why don't we just give staff direction to get out what we've done to this point. We'll take a look at it and discuss it further. Councillor Rao? So would that be part of the, the motion? No, it, it's just a direction to staff. Okay. If, if I, staff I, could I uh, record that. Yep. Okay. Uh, and uh, Councillor Hobbs. Uh, thank you for the workshop. Uh, much has already been said, so I'll be very quick. But um, and YVR is independent. I think we all recognize that. But I think it's important for them uh, to emphasize the consultation process, not just with Burkeville, but with all of Richmond. And it will be good that we're addressing that. So I'm glad that was brought to our attention. In terms of uh, some of the content in the report, I'd also be interested to know uh, through this process what YVR's expectations are in returning to what you might call normal uh, traffic. I understand traffic is down to perhaps even 10% of what it was at its record in 2019. So that might affect their timelines and their planning. When it comes to the third runway, I'd be interested to know what that runway is about, if it is even in the long distance uh, a plan that they have, because the two main runways where the international long uh, distance carriers take off uh, that's one thing. But is this third runway 
going to be like that or is it going to be more for the smaller regional carriers and smaller aircraft that come into the airport because that has a big impact on the kind of traffic you see on that runway at the south terminal and the part about the commercial development and the um, uh, development of the south terminal along there on the south side um, I did take that to be but I would like it confirmed that it is going to be more for a local um, uh, people and workers and companies that are along the south side and then I think that's a very important point that was made that uh, it also catered to people in Burkeville and perhaps even people in North Richmond uh, to an extent without impacting uh, traffic too much so it's an important distinction between that and making another destination uh, mall like MacArthur Glen which I don't think is the intent so um, thank you very much. I think number or letter B would take care of your concern, the last concerns, because it does talk about clarifying their stated intent to limit retail to be local serving. So it's just a matter of uh, defining that. Uh, in in terms of the recovery plan, I, I think it's all it's it's very interesting. Um, that would be something that we would speak to them about when they come to speak to us as a council. Um, you know, obviously it's on everybody's mind as to how they're doing and, you know, what, what's happening uh, in the future. So, uh, so I think, again, I think that would be covered off. Um, all right, with that, I'm, I'll remind you that uh, the motion is as stated. The motion is as stated uh, in the matter with the amendment. And also, we added C to meet with CEO and the staff of YVR, uh, meeting with our council. And thirdly, that uh, the letters that would go out would be copied to our local MPs. Now, Councillor Day, I believe you've already spoken. That was to the amendment. I just wanted to say that I think I, we absolutely have, should support this because by deferring the construction of the third parallel runway, it could be that we can finally convince the Minister of transportation to force them to be allowed to use the north runway for landing and takeoff. So this is a step in the right direction and I'm 100 percent supporting it. All right. I'm, I'm sure. holding the question on the motion. All those in favor? Any opposed? It's carried with Councillor Wolf opposed. That brings us to number 22, Councillor McPhail. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, agenda item 22, recommended long-term streetscape visions for Bayview, Chatham, and Moncton Street. The planning committee recommendation is that, as described in the report titled, recommended long-term streetscape vision for Bayview, Chatham, and Moncton Streets, dated May 7, 2021, from the Director of Transportation. One, the frontage, surface elements, and suite of street furniture be endorsed. Two, the long-term roadway geometry be endorsed and three staff be directed to re report back with an implementation strategy and I so move moved and seconded all right uh, uh, go ahead uh, thank you your worship as the report outlines the recommended streetscape visions for Bayview Street Chatham Street and Moncton Street reflect public feedback are supportive of the heritage character of Steeston and improve the public realm with wider sidewalks and opportunities for active transportation to reduce reliance on private auto uh, trips to the village. And thank you to staff uh, for the report. I think it makes a lot of sense. And as we discussed at committee, uh, I still have concerns about Chatham Street as long as the buses are parking there. And as I've mentioned before, sometimes I've seen seven buses parked on Chatham. And you know that really does impede vehicle, bicycle, and pedestrian movement, and so therefore their safety. So I, I know at committee staff said we are getting a report in the near future about uh, the TransLink bus situation, so I look forward to that. Uh, so this is a going forward proposal, and the proposals in the package um, add up to about $10 million. So a question to you, your worship, to staff. So in the future, there will be financial implications, and uh, the implementation strategy uh, will compact us at some time. And when is that expected? Through your worship to Councillor McPhail, um, if so directed to create the implementation strategy, we would try and bring that back within three to six months. Three to six months. So we'll be potentially looking at it at the 2022 capital budget. Potentially. That is correct. All right. Thanks very much. Councillor Steves. 
Uh, thank you. Um, I, I will be opposing uh, this resolution. I supported the committee because I was so happy we made some changes. Uh, the original report, I think way back in 2017, I called it the gentrification of Steveston. But I, I got, got this letter today, or we all got from uh, Dana Westermark, and he's bang on, certainly on Chatham Street. Uh, he says that basically we got rid of the gentrification part in Moncton. We're back to the to the gritty pioneer uh, working class type of community that uh, that has uh, been the been the place we've had all the movies and films and everything else because it's been remarkably unchanged. But my concern is uh, his comments on Chatham Street. Around 20, 2001 or two, we actually ha passed a motion of council to do exactly what he said, was to have ankle parking on Chatham Street. Uh, we were at 90 to 100 feet wide, and we would, we would maintain the narrow sidewalks, and that's how we would solve our parking problem. Uh, Johnny Carline was the uh, CAO at the time, and uh, we, we, we had uh, allowed a third story in the buildings in, in Steveston to put into a parking fund to build a parking structure, uh, presumably at the corner of Moncton and Number One Road. And Carline recommended that we don't do that, but that we would put the parking on Chatham Street. So uh, the, the, the proposed parking lot became a McDonald's at the time, and our parking was planned uh, for angle parking on Chatham. This report rules out any options. Uh, we own the city property on 2nd Avenue behind the brick block. I think it's wrong to, to put a parking structure there. They, they are no, no great addition to the community. There's one at Ladner and it's, I, think it's, I think it's terrible. Uh, you, using a, a, a good commercial lot in the middle of a town to, for a parking structure. The best thing is to do exactly what Dana Westermark says. Uh, park the cars along Chatham Street and um, put a longer uh, uh, time limit for parking there. You have a short time limit on Moncton, say of an hour or whatever, and Bayview, and put three hour parking on Chatham and you'll get people uh, parking their cars there and walking into town. And I think that's much more better to uh, promote a pedestrian oriented town than where we're gonna have the parking along Moncton and Bayview. Uh, the other problem I have with this is it's, it presupposes that where the buses will be, because if if the uh, if the sidewalks are widened and there's no angle parking, there's only one place that the buses can go, or two places. One is Moncton Street, which I support by the community center, or here on Chatham. So if we want to get the buses out of, off of Chatham Street, the last thing we should be doing is uh, uh, narrowing the street down where only buses will be and no parking, because that's what this is, this proposal is all about. So I think it's, it's unfortunate that we have so many different issues in one report. Uh, we solved half the problem that uh, we had when we referred the, the uh, report back several years ago. And the, a, a, another quarter is solved, but we still have the problem of the angle parking and the buses. So I'm not going to support it until we get determined where the buses are going to go. Councillor Liu. about this. I uh, took a sober second look at it as well and I'm looking at Bayview and thinking that seven, losing 17 parking spots on Bayview um, is going to impact people we hadn't really considered earlier. Um, it was pointed out to me that um, uh, that's sort of a high ground if you will and there's the grade to get up to there if you park further down further away from Bayview down on Moncton Street is a five degree grade. So if you're trying to push an elderly person in a wheelchair and you yourself aren't necessarily that hail, um, you're having a hard time getting up there and you're having a hard time getting up to the to the waterfront and to get to the restaurants there and to the experience there. And so um, are, are we actually achieving what we were setting out to? I think uh, much of this assessment was based on a COVID year and yes, we want people out biking and everything else. That being said, I think a lot of people who had mobility issues or health issues stayed away from Steveston during last year. So we weren't seeing maybe the higher uptick of people needing the accessible spaces and, and the access to that those spaces. And so um, I, I think it's worthwhile to relook at it. Um, I also heard from a, a parent, you know, we're at soccer picking up our kids. Steveston Village, we park our bikes and we walk from there because even when they're with me, I don't feel comfortable riding along Moncton even though it's a 30K limit, he's not comfortable riding with his kids. So, you know, 
as much as people like the original geometry of, that's been there for 40 years, are we really creating something that is um, accessible for families and people and, and like, are we making it accessible for the cars or are we making it accessible for the people? And I think we really have to maybe step back and rebalance that. Um, Councillor McNulty. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Uh, I have to agree with all I, I wouldn't know. Uh, uh, Lloyd B. might know. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Worship. The, uh, the sound was out on my computer for a moment there. Um, if the question could be repeated. Has TransLink even thought about purchasing any property for a, a bus loop or bus station along any street in Richmond? Or in Steveston, sorry. Uh, through your worship to Council McNulty, they have looked at a number of locations for purchase. They they currently do not have um, financing to purchase something, even if they could find something. But um, at the end of the day, there's there's not a lot of sites available and and none really in the village that are um, purchasable to make this um, this bus um, station. I, I knew the answer to the question because when I was on the Harbors Board 20 years ago. Um, they, they didn't want to buy anything and the Harbor Authority was prepared to sell them some property uh, where they've developed their own parking lot and they refused to pay. So I, I guess we have an issue there. The, I have a question about wide sidewalks on Chatham. They're already very wide, north and south. We don't need any more wide sidewalks. And I agree with Harold, we went through this with the angle parking. We can get additional parking if we looked at angle parking along there. Um, at least looked at it. Uh, I think it's something we might consider. Um, I have a question that was brought up by Councillor Liu about Moncton Street and safety. There are no signs there saying 30K. I can't find them. Where are they? They're sure not on Bayview. People gun around the corner on Bayview. You know, we've got to put some traffic signs up saying maybe put them in red, say 30 KPM. Lloyd B., can you answer that? Yep. Uh, through your worship, to Councillor McNulty, um, I don't have the detailed information of where they are um, on Moncton, but uh, I'm, I think there are some, but we can check that and bring it back to you, and if there are none, we can put them up on the I, I think we, we should continue on with 30 Ks in, this, uh, in the, the town side of Steveston, and I think if you check, um, if they are there, they're hidden, and I walk there every day. The other question I had, uh, Your Worship, to staff I, is, are we separating, I see we're going to use painted lines. Are we going to not use pylons? You know, sometimes the bikers are, are root, just as rude as the, uh, the drivers in the car. When it comes to, uh, as it was pointed out, you're pushing a stroller, you've got a wheelchair, or whatever. And I'm just wondering if we're going to have these uh, bikes separated. Because they don't care. They go in and out. It's like being on the on the West Dyke. Lloyd, do we know that? Yeah, uh, through your, your worship, we uh, we were not planning to put uh, delineators along uh, on along Bayview. Um, at the end of the day, we didn't feel like they suited the character of Steveson in that location. And staff believes that with the 30 kilometer an hour speed zone, that that the painted lines are adequate for that area. Well, I want staff to come walking with me on a busy okay. Friday, and let's see if it's 30 kilometers per hour. People do not obey it, and um, I think we're wishing and hoping because Bayview is not safe. Um, Your Worship, I think we've got to do a little bit more work in, in Steveston, to be quite frank with you, rather than push this thing through. Um, I think we need to, we've got some input from uh, members of the community, and I think um, uh, we need to do it right. And most importantly, I'd like to hear from the, the merchants of uh, on Bayview. Are they happy with what's have you again? And uh, the same with Moncton. We, we know uh, uh, what it is. And I'm not so sure um, uh, we, if we lower the speed limit, then the cyclists 
can mingle with the traffic. All right. If it's we'll, slow enough. We'll Thank talk you. about a referral back in, in due course. Okay, Co I would Councilor do, Hobbs. do so. Yes, do you want to my level? No, Councilor Hobbs. I did have some concerns in, in reading through the report, and admittedly, I'm coming into the process a little bit late, so I may be lacking information. But one of the things that jumped out at me was the consultation process that I could read about uh, taking place in 2020. Everybody has already mentioned that 2020 was a very unique year, so I'm not sure if it's representative of uh, a typical year in any neighbourhood in Richmond, let alone Steveston. The um, other part of the process in terms of consultation that I would like to see more of, uh, Const uh, Councillor McNulty just mentioned that, and that's with the business community and the Merchants Association, but also with some of the community groups like 2020 and some of the other stakeholders in the community. That may have happened and I, I may have missed it, I may not have been privy to that, but I'd like to see uh, extensive consultation. Anytime you talk about loss of parking, you know, it's an issue in Steveson. I realize we want people to get out of their cars, but the reality is a lot of people have to drive there for various reasons, including accessibility. So when it comes to Bayview, I th I'm sure we've all cycled, we've all walked, and we've all driven in that route, and it is fairly congested. I also find that people tend to go very slowly, even on their bikes and in their cars, and are very mindful of one another. That's been my experience. But I will say something else that's already been mentioned. I think one of the biggest, if not the biggest traffic concern among those three roads is actually the buses on Chatham. When you have them parked and lined up on uh, well the south side in particular but the north side as well anybody trying to cross the road whether you're on foot whether you're on a bike or whether you're trying to nose your way out around a bus and cross the street it's very tricky and you have to be very careful and really take your time and i think that that is perhaps the biggest traffic issue that i see and i realize it's not a simple solution but i really would like to see some alternative worked out with TransLink and other stakeholders so that we don't have to have as many buses parked along the road, blocking vision, blocking traffic, probably creating some noise and other nuisance factors uh, for people that live there and travel down there. So uh, I do have some reservations about the report and uh, some concerns that I'd like to see explored in greater detail. Thank you. All right, Councillor Al. Yes, Your Worship, I agree with the, the previous speakers on the, on the, on the report. Um, staff seems to be very confident that the proposed uh, changes will get the support of the community based on um, uh, the experience uh, in, in summer 2020. However, you know, I, I remember that uh, even in summer 2020, we do not get one-sided uh, support for the changes. So it's, it's, uh, people are still um, uh, having split opinions on, on th those changes. And also, even for those people who support the changes last year, most likely, or probably, you know, they support it because they know that this is going to be a temporary measures. But we are talking about permanent changes here. So I don't know uh, whether or not uh, the, the same people who support the changes last year will support the changes in the future. So I, I will support the idea that we refer this back to staff uh, to, to have further uh, consultation with the population, I mean the community and, and uh, the business people. Councillor Day. Thank you very much. You know, everyone's come up with some brilliant ideas and great observations, and it seems to me the buses are the number one problem. So why don't we put in the angle parking? Oh, here, put the buses. Real simple. They'll end up somewhere else. They won't be there because they won't be able to park there. Uh, secondly, I don't think we should move forward with this. It's an almost $10 million project until after we get the translate report. They need to put up or get out. And uh, the only way to force that to happen is to be uncomfortable for the bus to be parked there. And there's, we've talked about that when we build a specific community center, we could have a hub around there for the bus. We could integrate that with affordable housing. There's a million great ideas out there. So while I know that everyone in the village I've talked to is so excited to get something new, if it's not the right new, it's the wrong choice. So I, I was going to make a motion to refer this back. I think a number of the other councillors want to do the same thing. So I would like to move that we send this back to staff, wait for the transit report, and investigate the option of putting an angle parking straight away to get rid of the um, 
I'm going to suggest simply there's been too many concepts that have been put out there to limit, limit the referral back in that way. Um, it's obvious uh, based on what all of the councillors have said, particularly those who are on planning committee, that this matter was not ready to come to council. So my suggestion is we simply have a matter, we refer the matter back to staff for more discussions with planning committee as to how to resolve the outstanding issues. So moved. moved and seconded. Um, Councillor Liu. Uh, thank you, Worship. I'm wondering if um, we could separate out the two things, the streetscape and the road changes and parking issues, because I think there was a lot of agreement around one thing, and there's so much sort of bundled into this little report that, um, you know, some of it we'd like to get through and some of it, it can take a little well, bit longer to work through. The motion is to refer the whole thing back. Um, with respect, I don't see how you can, even though some are, some are going to be acceptable, some aren't, and some need modification, and many will be acceptable, but not yet. Uh, I don't know how you could Well, when it comes it back to planning, maybe it can come in two pieces? Well, the streetscape and the I road. suggest that staff sit down with planning committee the next, uh, the next meeting with his you know, within a week or two, and say, okay, how are we going to do this? Uh, what, what do we need to do? Uh, so on the referral, Councilor McPhail. Uh, thank you, Worship. Well, I was going to ask for a bit more information about what Planning Committee was going to do, but I'll sit down with staff and we'll come up with a plan that we can put before uh, Planning Committee. But, you know, this has already been in the works for a very long time. And, you know, we're never going to make everyone happy. And I think that our staff have worked and you know using best practices have come up with a lot of good ideas and i think we have to keep front of mind that another summer is coming and while you know we do have some things in the works uh to put in for the summer that we need to look at a plan that's going to take us you know well into the future so uh, i'll support referral but i hope that we can uh, get to work and get something so that we will uh move forward thank you yeah, the following referral, November 21st, 2017, Planning Committee meeting. There's a certain circularity to this one. Okay, this is on the, the referral back. All those in favor? Anybody opposed? Anybody opposed? Councillor Wolf is opposed. Okay, so it's carried. Um, so then we... Uh, Get to the matters 23 and 24, which we knew were coming off the consent agenda. Councillor McPhail. Thank you, Your Worship. Item 23, application by Vivid Green Architects, Inc. for rezoning at 6740 and 6780 Francis Road from the single detached RS1E zone to a new site-specific two-unit dwellings, ZD7, Francis Road, Blendell Zone. Planning Committee recommendation is one, that Richmond Zoning Bylaw 8500, Amendment Bylaw 10271, to create a new two-unit dwelling, ZD7, Francis Road, Blundell, site-specific zone, be introduced and given first reading. And two, that Richmond Zoning Bylaw 8500, Amendment Bylaw 10277, for the rezoning of 6740 and 6780 Francis Road from the single detached RS1E zone, to the two-unit dwelling ZD7 Francis Road Blundell Zone be introduced and given first reading, and I would so move. Moved and seconded. Uh, the application is seeking permission for the properties to be subdivided to create four duplex. Uh, sorry, four four duplexes on each of the two lots for a total of eight dwelling units. The duplexes will be in a front-back configuration with one dwelling unit at the front of the property and the second dwelling unit at the back. The front and back units will be connected by individual attached carports. And um, I'm really happy to see this. I recall the discussion a couple of years ago when there was a lot of ex uh, concern express ex expressed by councillors about the loss of duplexes. So it's, I'm, it's good to see this application, which will bring duplexes online and into the, into the community and add more housing options to the housing continuum. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Day. Thank you very much for everybody. Yeah, I will not be supporting this or the next one, number 24, which is the lot directly beside this one. Uh, the number one reason for me is that we are going to have three sets of fourplexes with vehicle courtyards where everyone has tried to uh, wrangle in and out. This is absolutely a perfect location.
application for townhouses. And because there are three lots, I think that's exactly what we should be putting in. Instead of having three driveways on Francis, there should be one. And so I won't be supporting this because I don't think it's the best use of these properties. And I think we're creating a nightmare for the people who move into them. So I will not be supporting this one or the next item, number 24. I'm going to ask Mr. Ersig um, or Wayne Craig if he's there. I see Wayne's there. I mean, if you have, th there's going to be what? Four duplexes, four duplexes, so eight, uh, eight units. How much more dense would a townhouse be? A townhouse complex? To me, Your Worship, uh, in terms of number of units, you'd effectively be looking at a very similar number if it was townhouses versus the duplexes you see before you tonight. Uh, we have done a assessment uh, in the past of townhouses versus duplex when we had duplexes proposed on Railway Avenue uh, approximately a year plus ago. Uh, the results of that analysis were we'd be looking at roughly the same number of units. All right. Uh, Councillor Hobbs. Um, I think we've all heard uh, concerns expressed by the public about housing affordability and housing affordability means uh, a few different things to different people but in this case uh, the duplexes proposed do add to the type of housing options we have available in Richmond and they do relatively impact affordability because uh, they will be more affordable than, for instance, building another single uh, detached home. So the loss of duplexes, triplexes, and even fourplexes in Richmond is something that uh, I'd like to see addressed and I'd like to see more of in the city, quite frankly, because I think it increases housing options for more people, especially young couples starting off with young families. So this comment applies to the next one as well as uh, Councillor's Day, uh, as her comment applied to the next one. So I think it's consistent with the city's arterial road policy and the land use designation uh, for neighborhood residential. And I did look at it actually physically as well. And so I, I do support uh, this. Thank you. All right, we're gonna call the question then on number 23. All those in favor? Any opposed? It's carried with Councillor Steves, Day and Wolf opposed. Uh, and then number 24, uh, uh, Councillor McPhail. Thank you, Your Worship. Item 24, application by DOXA Development for rezoning at 6700 Francis Road from the single detached RS1E zone to the site-specific two-unit dwelling ZD7 Francis Road Blendell Zone. Planning Committee recommendation is that Richmond Zoning Bylaw 8500, Amendment Bylaw 10273, for the rezoning of 6700 Francis Road from the single detached RS1E zone to a new site-specific two-unit dwelling ZD7 Francis Road Blendell zone be introduced and given first reading, and I so move. Moved and seconded. Uh, the application is seeking permission for the property to, be, property, property to be subdivided to create two duplex lots for a total of four duplex units. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, I think people have already spoken on this one, so we'll call the question. All those in favor? Uh, those opposed? That's carried with Councillors Wolf, Day, and Steve's opposed. The next item comes from the Finance and Corporate Services Division uh, on the 2020 annual report and the report highlights. And the re staff recommendation is that the report titled 2020 Annual Report and 2020 Annual Report Highlights be approved. And I would so move. Moved and seconded. Uh, very simply, uh, we have done the annual report for the city. And uh, as has been our habit for the last six or seven years, we've also distilled that down to the annual report highlights. Um, so that people can, it's much less complex and it's much more readable. And so I think, uh, I, I think it's been a great production and uh, I can say, I, I believe this has been printed all in-house and as usual, uh, our in-house people do a terrific job. Uh, all right, 
We'll go to Councillor Liu. Now, for people, if they would like a hard copy of this, City Hall is not yet open to the public, but can they still come by City Hall and pick one up from the person who's greeting at the door, or is there somewhere else people can obtain a hard copy of this? Uh, who can tell us that? Uh, Jerry Chong, would you know that? Or who, would, who could tell us that? Uh, through your worship to uh, Councillor Liu, if there is a request that can be made uh, via phone, and we can definitely get that to the resident. Oh, perfect. Thank you. All right, but taking that point, I think it'd be a very good thing to have at least the report highlights a whole stack of them at the, the greeting desk as people come in to pay their taxes so that, you know, they can take a look at it as they're waiting to pay their taxes and such. Uh, I think that they would find it quite interesting. Uh, Councilor McPhail. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and thank you to staff for the report. And I just wanted to make a comment that uh, recently I saw that the City of Kelowna, through their YouTube channel, had created a video for their annual 2020 report. And at only two minutes, I thought it was a great overview of their year and just one other way that uh, to, they can connect with their community. So I, I forwarded it to staff, and I hope that we can do something like that uh, in the future. I think it's great, you know, if we look at many different ways to connect with the community so they know what's going on. Thank you. Yeah, good idea. Okay, uh, let's call the question then on the report and the highlights. All those in favor? Any opposed? That is carried. Um, that brings us to the delegations. We have a motion to resolve into the Committee of the Whole to hear delegations on non-agenda items. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Uh, so we have two... Uh, delegations tonight. Uh, one is, the first one will be Anastasia French and Stephen Von Tchaikowski uh, to present on the city's living wage and scheduling a submission, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, yes, if, if the two of you could introduce yourself, I see you're still both on mute. Uh, if you could introduce yourself, and between you, you've got five minutes. Okay, um, I'll sh can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Okay, let me share my screen. Um, I'm Anastasia. I'm the campaign organizer for the Living Wage for Families campaign. Um, and Stefan, I guess, do you want to introduce yourself when your time, when your little bit comes? Sounds good. Um, so thank you very much for having me. I'm conscious I've got five minutes, so I'll try and be very quick. Um, I'm uh, calling in from the unceded and southern territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Spaceview communities, and I'm here to talk about the Living Wage for Families campaign, of which um, I know this issue has been discussed before and that staff have done a lot of work to get to look into this. But um, to give a quick bit of a refresher for those who don't know about Living Wage, um, a living wage is the hourly amount that a family needs to be able to afford basic essentials. It really is a bare bones calculation. And we calculated on um, that the living wage for Metro Vancouver at the moment is $19.50 an hour. A living wage employer, which I'm hoping that the City of Richmond will um, will support plans to become a living wage employer. A living wage employer plans to, uh, agrees to pay all their direct and contracted staff the living wage for their region. There are 250 living wage employers across British Columbia, and that living wage can be made up not just of the base wage that an employee makes, but also of any benefits that they offer. So that can help reduce the cost as well for employers. We've seen during the COVID-19 pandemic that many of BC's lowest paid workers are on the front line. They're keeping us fed, they're keeping us safe, they're keeping us cared for. We've seen that COVID-19 disproportionately affects people living in poverty. They're having to work multiple jobs to make ends meet, which is multiple touch points to potentially contract and spread the disease. Um, and they're living in overcrowded housing. We've also seen that low paid workers are unable to take time off if they are ill because there is no sick pay. There's, they may not receive paid sick leave. We've also seen that uh, there's been a public appreciation for, for these everyday heroes. And I think in the general public, there's much more of an awareness of the really valuable work that people who are working in security or cleaning or doing this kind of vital work are really doing. We've also seen many employers who are stepping up voluntarily to pay their staff a living wage since the pandemic. And we've seen a 400% increase in support for the campaign amongst employers. Um, and so I think it's lots of employers realizing that it's the right thing to do. Stefan, I don't know if you want to quickly talk about the benefits for workers. 
Yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Stefan von Suchowski. I'm the president of Vancouver District Labor Council. We're very uh, proud to support Living Wage Campaign. Of course, our Labor Council represents largely uh, unionized workers, including those employed by the city. And generally, those workers do make a living wage already. So um, it's, uh, you know, largely the non-union workers, contract workers, who are predominantly those who uh, face greater precarity and are more likely to not earn a living wage currently, and it's, it's for them that we want to advocate. A uh, living wage would be a meaningful uh, change for those workers and for their families, and by becoming a living wage employer, joining numerous municipalities and other employers across BC, and really leading the way for a fairer economy for all, uh, and sending a really positive message as well uh, to other employers in Richmond about the benefit of living wages. Um, and it's not just a benefit for workers. I think the benefit for workers is, is quite clear, but there's also a benefit for employers by paying, by ensuring that both their staff and contract workers are earning a living wage. 93% of living wage employees in the UK see a benefit to joining the program. It leads to lower staff turnover, lower retraining costs, lower overtime, lower absenteeism, but increased morale, performance, productivity. Um, and the City of Victoria has also found that becoming a living wage employer, one of the biggest differences has been in the quality of their contractors, um, because their contractors... Um, um, I kind of um, are more committed to, to um, working for the city than, than previously. It's also improved reputation and profile. And um, I think it's, it really sends a strong signal out um, that the, the city of Richmond would want, they want good paying jobs in the city. Uh, there's a ripple effect through local supply chains. Um, those with lower incomes tend to spend their money locally. And so if they receive a pay rise, that money is spent in local businesses and in the local economy, rather than when um, those on higher incomes receive pay rises, often that's, that's invested um, maybe into retirement savings and into other things, whereas lower, those on lower incomes spend that money they've got because they need to. We've also, and this is the biggest, this is the biggest reason we're really trying to get as many local governments involved to the program is that we're seeing a real growth this year in living wage employers. 20% are businesses that want to do business with the city and they know that either because it's in their contracts or in their RFP that, that it looks stronger if they say that they're paying a living wage and so it really it promotes a positive message to others um, within the community that a living wage is really important. Um, we've got 10 local governments across the province um, within within the lower mainland. Um, the city of North Vancouver and the city of Langley are just at the final stages of putting together their application and will be joining this list. Um, and so hopefully the city of Richmond will, will vote to go forward with it. Um, and this is, I know I'm really running short on time. Uh, the solicitation process, staff have already, and this is something I really want to stress, is the staff have done it, they've done really good work into looking at, at the quality of wages at the moment in the city. And I'm really delighted to say that most, that, that most, according to the staff report, a lot of people, most people in the city, if not all, are already earning a living wage. And so there, there will no be, there won't be significant budget implications for becoming a living wage employer. But it is that positive message that you want good paying jobs in the city and you want to make sure that anyone who does business with the city is paying their staff a living wage. Um, and then the, the next stage of the certification process will hopefully be, if not today, at a future council meeting where um, council vote to move forward with becoming a living wage employer. And then there's a staff report um, which um, they work with us to complete their application form and get certified. And it really is, a, it's as we're trying to make it as little bureaucracy as possible because we want to be able to spread the word and try and get as many municipalities involved as we can. So thank you very much for hearing me. Hopefully I did it in my five minutes, but I know that was a lot of information, so thank you. Uh, okay, so just a minute. Councillor McF uh, McNulty, you've moved referral. Referral to staff for okay. evaluation. Referral has been moved and seconded. Um, I've got a few speakers. Uh, we're now on referral. Councillor Day. Councillor Day, you are on mute. Um. So if we go with the referral, we can't just adopt this. Is that correct? Absolutely not. No. Okay, so we're referring it back to have staff do another staff report so that like, where we're going to go to next. If we approve this, it will go straight to a public hearing, would it not? Come back. No. No. Um, what's on the floor is referral. Okay. Uh, we have Councillor Steves. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. I was going to move a more positive motion. This will be the third time that I've supported, well, two, two times I've moved referrals. 
and I was hoping this time we'd get some action. So what I propose the referral to read would be the Richmond Council direct staff to update all existing policies required to complete the certification process to become a living wage employer as outlined in the Living Wage for Families campaign. And that could be the referral because uh, I, I, I'd simply like to see us now. You may recall I referred this about a month ago regarding a couple of employees that work at the Stevenson Museum, the people that are, are high, belong to city staff that sit around all day uh, keeping the museum part open and get a living wage, but the people doing all the work in the post office are, are a dollar an hour or less. So I, I, I see no reason why we can't uh, adopt this. The, the city staff gave us a report saying how many uh, um, companies we're dealing with uh, that are larger companies than the, than the Stevenson Post Office, and there's only three. And uh, we have a few people like the, the two people or two or three people at the post office that we would have to bring up their, their employment as well. So I would certainly like to re see the refer referral read that we would ask staff to consider uh, adopting the living wage program. Um, that, is, uh, that is a motion that to adopt this in the guise of a referral motion. I take it that Councilor McNulty's motion was to take, uh, do some analysis and report back. So that is the referral motion. It shows where we're weak and where we're okay. strong, and um, if we um, utilize... Um, well, just an analysis. Yeah, co companies okay. that uh, don't Counselor, pay a wage, and then we don't employ them. Councillor uh, McPhail. Implications. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I was going to propose a referral as well, and I, and I think it's really important that we uh, get that in-depth analysis before uh, we go any further. There could be some unintended consequences. There could be some in-camera materials that we need to look at. So I think before we go any further, I'd just like to see all that uh, data and information. Thank you. Councillor Wolf. Uh, thank you, uh, through your worship, to the delegates. Thank you for coming out and speaking uh, so elegantly to all the reasons why we should be supporting this and why we're, why we're not uh, leading the way. Um, so my question is actually is to staff related to Councilor McPhail's uh, recent comment there. Are there any flagged uh, items, anything that staff would uh, um, ra raise to our attention now? Because I'm, I'm considering voting against the referral from Councilor McNulty because I think the better referral is the one from Councilor Steves as it was just worded. So I'm not sure if staff can comment first if there's any hesitations they see without... Um, I, uh, Councillor Wolf, <clears throat> I don't think that that's a fair question to ask of staff. The referral suggestion is that there be uh, an analysis of the situation, an analysis of options, financial ramifications, and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's what has been sought. Um, Councillor Day, you've already spoken. Speak again. Um, I have questions. Well, just a minute. Just a minute. You've spoken before, and you get to I, speak. You get to speak once. Mayor Brody, can we not ask a question of staff? Yes, you can. Thank you. Um, what percentage? Uh, we already have heard that Richmond is a living wage employer. What percentage of our contracted employees are not living wage employees? Our that is a matter of uh, confidential information, and I'll direct staff, if there's something you can tell us, that's fine, but do not betray confidences here. Someone on staff? Yes, through, through your worship to, to Councillor Day, there's nothing we can add to the confidential memo that you have already that we provided on, on the, the topic of contract workers. So what, what the confidential memo you have in front of you is the answer to that at this time. Okay. So on the referral motion, all those in favor? Uh, those opposed? It, uh, there's one, two, it is carried with Councillor Steve's Day, Wolf, and Al opposed. All right, thank you very much to the two delegations, delegates. Then we go to the next delegation.
delegation, Chaslyn Galanders, who I understand has added somebody uh, on her presentation. Uh, now, I'm just going to uh, remind you, uh, oh, I see it's Howard Grant. Uh, delegations have five minutes. Please introduce yourself, and you have five minutes. Uh, good evening. I'm Chaslyn Galanders. I'm a resident of Richmond, and I'm a member of the Niska Nation. I acknowledge and thank the first people of the Hunkamanam language group on whose traditional and unceded territory that I'm joining you from. Thank you to Mayor and Council for reviewing my letter. As you know, a visual was held to, in Richmond to commemorate the 215 Indigenous children whose remains were identified in Kamloops. And thank you to Mayor Brody and the councillors who attended and showed your support at the rally, or sorry, vigil. It's important for the city to recognize the Indigenous people have constitutional rights and distinct actions are required. I submit that Indigenous issues must be addressed through Indigenous-specific policies. There are 94 calls to action arising from the report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission which includes adopting and in implementing the UN Declaration as a framework for reconciliation. Many of the calls to action are for the federal and provincial government. However, there are calls to action for the municipalities to address. In order to make progress on these issues, a government-to-government -government relationship with Indigenous nations is required. In addition, a budget to ensure the resources and expertise is available across all departments of the city. I've communicated much of what I would like to communicate to Council through my letter that I sent, and I would like to provide an opportunity for Musqueam Councillor Howard Grant to address you. Thank you so much, Councillor Grant. I'm honoured to have you join me tonight. Uh, you're muted, Howard. wanted to add two minutes to my time because of that. <laughs> but thank you, uh, Your Worship and members of Council for giving us the opportunity to speak to you uh, in regards to this, something of, of very much important to all of us. I am Howard Grant, but more importantly, I am Kaya Palano the Seven. I am the direct descendant of the man who met Captain Vancouver in 1791 and welcomed the first European onto the shores of our beautiful territory here that uh, we are all blessed and fortunate to reside on. I want to say that, um, that I recognize the priorities of your council and the time that we were taking, but I want to also inform you that the Muslim Indian Band and Richmond uh, a, a relationship is a priority as well. So I look to that in regards to how uh, my presentation will be made. Today, Indigenous are once again in the spotlight. The 215 uh, graves that were found puts us back into the same spotlight that we have been for the last 100 years. The Indian Act of 1876 placed onto reserve. Those were indeed prisoner of war camps. That's the reality of our world. The early part of the Indian Act is that we had to ask permission to move off of the reserve. They moved our village sites and our, and our various family homes into, into onto these reserves. And a um, member of your council, Mr. Steve, is very well aware of Pio, the, the site of the, where Manat was the last first family to be removed and replaced and placed elsewhere. They are then took on the name of the Point family, of which there's probably around 200 to 300 people right now of that one particular family. And I believe the extended family is around 800. So I look at those kinds of things, but I say, you today that we have an opportunity to create a new chapter, indeed probably a new book, as a result of all of these uh, new findings that are occurring at this moment. No longer with the empty promises, no words of sorry and without action, and this, these things are not new to us. Racism is now front and center. We have to remove those kinds of things. The 94 calls uh, to action by the CRC has demonstrated that. You look at articles 46, 47, 48, and 57. 
47 and 57 deal particularly with municipalities. DRIPA by the provincial government has legislated that we are to work together and that as well that um, we look at UNDRIP with a national government that they're doing the same thing. You know, Vancouver City Council has demonstrated a way forward. They've created a protocol and a working relationship with my particular First Nation in developing a, to put life and reality to DRIPA. No longer do we have to wait for uh, work plans and strategic opportunities, but to realize that working together recognize to remove racism, to bring about a, a more reconciled relationship that deals with us as, as a unified family and community, not to, not to once again place the, the adopted child or, or whatever into a back room and not be heard. And we've been in that back room for too long. And Richmond is probably a primary residence of many of our families that live on this must go IR number two at the moment. And we have to replace and stack here within that Richmond community. So I look at those kinds of things and I say thank you to uh, Ash and Chapman for, for bringing these kinds of things forward to, to create more of an awareness, understanding, and an education, not only to the Richmond Council, but to the bureaucracy within and the public administration of the history, the culture, and, and the people of this land. Because if you don't have that education and deep appreciation and understanding, how can you, how can you develop a relationship? All right, so, sir, we'll ask you to wrap it up, please. So today I ask that we look at, at how we can create a, a more joint relationship. I, I would recommend that Richmond Council consider having a, semi-annual meetings with Musqueam Council to discuss issues of common concern to move forward in a, in a more friendly way. Because we together have to recover and rebuild the economy, not only of Richmond, but of British Columbia as well. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Back to Council to see what further plans we have for the recognition of the Indigenous people and land. Uh, Can we just simply refer the matter back to well, staff? All right, and then I'll, I'll move that and then I'll explain why. Okay, so the referral to staff has been moved and seconded. And speaking to that, Your Worship, uh, followed just actually to, uh, Mr. Grant took the words out of my mouth. Uh, what further plans we have as a city uh, to um, recognize the indigenous people and land, but also consultation on what could be done, leading to what, what he has said, and what actions could be taken that are unique to Richmond. I think it's very important that we, we talk about Richmond and our, um, our relationships within Richmond and whatever else the staff can do. All right, Councilor McPhail, uh, on thank, referral. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I support referral. Um, uh, thank you to the delegations for coming tonight and thank you for the um, correspondence that we have in our package and I think referral is a good place for this there's a, a lot of information in the correspondence a lot of suggestions and a lot of suggestions that came just on the floor tonight and so I think that it would probably impact several departments so I think staff are going to need some time to look at it uh, with regards to the cultural harmony plan you know it's a 10-year plan it is a living document it is reviewed annually and I, and I can tell you that uh, I'm the liaison to REAC, and they are looking at the Cultural Harmony Plan right now, so I think that is an easy one to say, yes, we're, we're going to be looking at that. So I support referral. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Wolf. Uh, thank you, uh, through Your Worship, to the de delegates. Thank you for coming and speaking tonight. Uh, I would just actually like to, to, the, uh, to the mayor, perhaps, um, I would like to make an amendment or an addition to the um, referral motion. Um, to include something that um, Delegate uh, Howard Grant just mentioned about a semi-annual meeting. And I'm not sure if that would fall to the office of the mayor to um, receive that invitation or make that request. Um, but if that could be part of this referral, I appreciate that. Well, yeah, staff can take that as direction uh, to consider that. 
uh, obviously, uh, if you're going to communicate, you want to have regular communications. So. Uh, Councillor Steves. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. I'm very, very much supportive of this referral. Um, Howard Grant is now, for the last year or so, has been a representative on the Steveson Harbour Authority, and it has made the world of difference. Uh, we're all working together. Uh, we're making improvements to the harbour together. We have a lot of uh, First Nations fishers, and uh, I think they're, they're, everyone's benefit from having this very close relationship. So anything we can do to improve our relationship, I think, is, is, uh, is really, really important. And, and I'm, I'm thanking Howard for coming out to ask for that annual meeting. I think it should lead to more than that in the future. Councillor Day. Um, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'll also be supporting the referral motion back because uh, Mr. Grant really helped me understand so much at those Peace and Harbor Authority meetings. And, you know, I wasn't aware of so many different aspects of, uh, of this issue. And I really appreciate his wisdom. So I look forward to meeting with them and, uh, and continuing this dialogue because, uh, you know, if we all work together and have give and take, it's amazing what we can do together. Uh, that seems never one-sided. It's always a, a two-sided um, situation, and I believe that when we work together, we're that much stronger. So thank you for your dedication. Thank you for the education you've given me so far, and I look forward to those meetings. Thank you. All right. Uh, on the referral motion, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Uh, so thank you to the delegations, and uh, that completes that matter. May I have a motion to revise the report? Thanks. Okay, uh, all those in favor opposed, carried. Uh, that brings us to the um, public announcements. Uh, first of all, in a timely fashion, is National Indigenous Peoples Day, June 21st. Uh, this is an opportunity for us all to honor the history, heritage, and valuable contributions of the vibrant and in in diverse Indigenous communities and to work together to build greater awareness and respect. It's also a reminder, especially given recent events, of the need for everyone to pause, reflect, and learn about the Indigenous culture and experience. A number of online activities will take place to mark the day, so for details, go to the city website. Then there are the 2021 grad signs. The city has again installed signage at landmark locations throughout the community to serve as backdrops for grad photo opportunities. The grad 2021 signs can be found in eight picturesque locations across Richmond. And again, uh, the go online and you'll find where the location and the maps are posted. Then we have everybody's favorite topic, property tax payments. A reminder that the taxes this year are due on July 2nd. Tax notices have been sent out. If you've not received your statement, please call the city tax department right away. The City Hall cashier has reopened just for tax and utility payments. If you're coming to City Hall, physical distancing measures must be followed and face masks must be worn. Cash will not be accepted, but taxes can be paid by check, debit, and credit card. City Hall hours and tax payment details are again on the City website. And finally, a reminder that we have the COVID-19 vaccination clinics. A reminder that you should register for your vaccination. Richmond has been fortunate, thanks to the efforts of all in our community, to keep our COVID-19 numbers low. But that does not mean we can ignore the safety provided through vaccination. We've got two vaccination clinics already opened at the River Rock Casino and at Kwantlen University. And we're working with Vancouver Coastal Health to make more available, especially for seniors. So if you know someone who needs vaccination and may not be able to get to a clinic, please call health officials on their behalf to assist them. Vaccination appointments are available online at the Government of BC website, or you can contact them by telephone 1-833-838-2323. Madam Clerk, bylaws for adoption. Well, can I have one? Um, yeah. I'm sorry, who's that? Councillor McPhail? No. 
Thanks, yeah, Your Worship. Ahead. The Friends of the Richmond Public Library are happy to have their first whale of a book sale of 2021 this Saturday, June 19th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Canby Library. So it'll be outside of the Canby Library branch, which is at Canby and Number 5 Road. All uh, funds will go towards the Richmond Public Library. Thank you. Well, I just want to put in a plug on that one because those book sales are fantastic. The number of books you can get for next to nothing is, is remarkable. So, uh, so they do good work and should be supported. All right, with that, uh, Madam Clerk, bylaws for adoption. Thank you, Your Worship. There is one bylaw for final adoption with no noted opposition. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? That is carried. And we're now adjourned. Thank you.